What's going on everybody? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host Jan. I hope you lot are doing well and welcome to today's video which is the match preview for Chelsea versus Leicester in the Premier League. Before we get into today's video I'd like to request that you do subscribe to this YouTube channel because I upload every single day and then sometimes stream in the evening so make sure you subscribe hit the bell notifications icon and also why not like the video to help me out? Right, so Chelsea playing at home at Stamford Bridge against the Foxes. A huge fixture for Chelsea and Frank Lampard. Indeed, his first home game, competitive home game as Chelsea manager. It's the homecoming of the golden boy, the prodigal son, returning home. It's going to be epic. So you can expect an electric atmosphere from the Stamford Bridge faithful, but good vibes won't be enough to see Chelsea through this match because Leicester City are an incredibly good team, especially under Brendan Rodgers. It won't just be the feel-good factor around Stamford Bridge that should hopefully help Chelsea in this game. Obviously Chelsea have just come out from Istanbul, so yes they'll be tired, but also they should be motivated and driven from what was an absolutely excellent performance against Liverpool in the Super Cup final. There's a few things to talk about in this game, how both teams will approach it, so let's get into it and let's bring up the analysis page. We're going to start by talking about Leicester City and how they might line up against Chelsea. The formation graphic next to me is the personnel that played last time out for Brendan Rodgers against Wolves. As you can see the predominant shape is 4-1-4-1 but perhaps a 4-5-1 out of possession and also when attacking this formation can kind of look like a 4-3-3 also depending on whether players like Madison and Ayozo Perez get forward with Jamie Vardy in possession. Just look at this lineup. Leicester City have an incredibly strong squad. Sure, they lost Maguire, but they got loads of money for him. And although Maguire is a very good centre-back, losing just a very good centre-back when you already have an excellent squad isn't the worst thing in the world. So you can make the argument that the centre-back partnership is maybe the weakest part of Leicester's eleven. but look at the rest of the field. In the full-backs position, they have Chilwell and Pereira, which are both incredibly talented players. For my money, they could both be playing in a top four side. And Leicester's midfield is so, so good. Easily better than, say, Manchester United's midfield. You've got Ndidi in there. Tielemans, who starts for Belgium. Madison, who sort of floats around in that 10 roll. And even Chowdhury, who's come in, who looks like an incredibly physical presence and a great addition to the Leicester team. Obviously, they've recently signed Jose Perez from Newcastle, who was scoring a lot of goals when they bought him. So he's a good age, he's in form, and he's in a team that will create more. So he'll probably score goals. And then there's the main man himself, Jamie Vardy. I know he's getting on a bit, but he's still, for me, one of the sort of top tier strikers in the Premier League and when Brendan Rodgers came into Leicester last season I think Jamie Vardy was like the form striker of that period. He was scoring a lot of goals. So how will Leicester play? Well for the last few years and certainly since they've won the Premier League actually they've been a really really strong counter-attacking side and they still are. They can do that incredibly well but now under Brendan Rodgers and with this better squad essentially this better starting 11 they can play different tactical approaches sure they can still play counter-attacking great but they also like to play with the ball and will want to keep possession and play a bit more attacking football certainly now they've got brendan rogers as coach so let's have a good starting 11 a couple of good bench options and different tactical approaches they can take depending on the opposition or how the game's going. So a formidable side and they've got options. Let's talk about Chelsea a little bit and switch the graphics over. As you can see, I've pulled up two different formations that I think Frank Lampard might use in this game. You'll probably notice I've left out the diamond formation now. This, the diamond midfield looks like a really interesting prospect for both Chelsea and Frank Lampard uh, in the Chelsea approach. But the thing is, I feel like it's not well versed enough in this squad, so therefore the next time I think he's going to try it will be against lower level opposition to try and sort of nurse it into the squad. So that leaves us with 4-2-3-1 and 4-3-3 which was recently used in the Super Cup final. So the obvious reason of using the 4-3-3 would have been how it's so well drilled into this current Chelsea squad's mind. Um, the biggest problem for Frank in his pre-season maybe and certainly that drubbing at Old Trafford would be the space between the lines leaving Yvonne for counter-attacks and with the 4-3-3 the way Maurizio Sarri drilled Chelsea 
They moved around together. There was never more than 15 yards between the defensive and midfield line. Therefore, they were more compact. And although they can play with possession that way, it's a safer way to play. So there is the 4-2-3-1, which does look like it's Frank Lampard's favorite formation, or certainly the formation that he wants to eventually be his official Chelsea formation. But the thing is with that, it does leave Chelsea vulnerable to the counter-attack, especially this current Chelsea side. And if Manchester United can score four with no reply in that formation, a team like Leicester City, who are probably equally as well versed in counter-attacking football, it would be a silly, slightly suicidal approach to play 4-2-3-1 again. So, 4-3-3 again, right? Surely that makes the most sense. Right, so let's assume Frank Lampard will go with the 4-3-3 again because it looked so good last time out in the final. The only real issue here is maybe fatigue because the players played 120 minutes, they had a couple of days rest, less rest than Liverpool and, you know, it's a midweek game and they've got to play another Premier League fixture on the weekend. Certainly Emerson looked like he had a sort of a bit of a groin ache in that game and you couldn't blame him for running up and down for 120 minutes and he was superb in that game. So what, maybe Marcus Alonso comes in at the left back position? Which is worrying because he's a lot slower and he's not great at defending. So does that provoke Frank in doing another formation change to accommodate Marcus Alonso in his system? I'm not so sure and I'm not saying a three back system, maybe another four back system that doesn't leave Alonso so exposed. I don't know. Comment what you think. One change which I probably would expect to come in is Vicaro Tomori starting in the centre back position. I've said it before on this channel, Tomori has excellent recovery pace. He can get back very very quickly and if Chelsea are playing against Jamie Vardy who's going to look to play on the shoulder and split defenders for me a well rested Tomori makes a lot of sense to be starting in this game. I think we'll see William brought into this game as he'll be rested and by now well integrated into the team and Pulisic didn't play the full distance like Pedro in Istanbul so maybe he'll start as well. But for me the most interesting talking point is the striker position. So Giroud started the final in Istanbul you think maybe it won't be him but maybe it will be him. Maybe he is the first team striker until the other guys are ready. I mean, he looks the best. He looks like the strongest option in terms of performance levels at the moment. But then again, you think Michy Batshuayi. He scored two great goals in preseason, yet he hasn't had a sniff yet in a competitive game. So he'd make sense, right? Surely. Start Michy Batshuayi, see what he can do, see if he can score more goals. Or maybe not. Coaches don't seem to fancy Batshuayi. Maybe there's something going on on the training ground that we don't know about. And then there's the case for Tammy Abraham. Maybe it would be a really smart coaching move to put Tammy immediately back in after that penalty miss. Build up his confidence. Imagine what world of good a goal would do for Tammy Abraham at Stamford Bridge this weekend. Frank Lampard might be thinking that. Maybe pulling him out after a sort of high profile mistake or penalty miss like that would do him more damage. And remember, there's that sort of trailer thought that Tammy Abraham, even if he's not performing as he should be at the moment, stylistically, he is in the mold of the striker that Frank Lampard wants to play in his Chelsea system. So it's a really, really interesting one here and quite a peculiar situation in that you could make a pretty damn strong case for all three strikers to start this game against Leicester. Let me know your thoughts on this. Get down in the comments and tell me who you think should be starting and why. Really interesting talking point that. Anyway, let's talk about the game, how maybe it could go and let's get rid of this analysis screen. I've said it before and I will reiterate the point that Chelsea, Frank Lampard's Chelsea, don't look like they'll ever have any problem carving out chances. It's just finishing off chances and scoring goals. We've just spoken about the strikers so there's that issue although all of them are capable of scoring goals just maybe not loads of goals. Pulisic does look incredibly bright and obviously there's the number 10s in uh, Ross Barkley and Mason Mount. I think Ross Barkley might start maybe. He loves a goal and obviously he was the sort of top scorer and form player of pre-season. Who knows, William might get off the mark and try and get a double digit season in the Premier League. So of course goals are concerning in this game and I think Leicester might be defensively resolute in this game. I've just got that feeling. But I also feel like they won't play an open game. I feel like they will play counter-attacking football against Chelsea because they know it will suit them. Therefore or the space between the lines issue is gonna have to be ironed out. Bringing someone like Tamori in would be great, like I said, 
uh, playing the 4 3 3, moving around as a unit more would be better as well. But in this game, it's really, really important to marshal Jamie Vardy well. And here's an interesting statistic for you here. Everyone knows about Vardy's record against the top six against versus the top everyone else in the league, rather. I think his conversion rate's like 14 or 13 percent against the bottom 14 sides but against the top six his conversion rate is about double that so he loves scoring against the bigger sides peculiar statistic that but it's true so Jamie Vardy will need to be marshaled in this game and he hasn't scored it yet I know it's only been one game but he will be frothing to score a goal and he loves scoring against Chelsea other than that there's the obvious dangers of Madison and Perez they'll be looking to play between the lines so if Chelsea did play a 4-2-3-1 that would be another danger of those two intricate sort of inside forward number 10 style players dancing around in that open space combining and then Jamie Vardy making little runs it's all very dangerous essentially and like I said previously in this video Leicester City are now a much better footballing side offensively it's not just counter-attacking and they will look to combine in Chelsea's defensive third anyway this will be an interesting game I do see Chelsea winning it but I don't see it being an easy game and I think they'll give themselves trouble I think it'll probably if I was forced to give a score prediction I reckon about 3-2 Chelsea I feel like they will concede because Leicester are good and it will be a high intense you know occasion where perhaps you make silly mistakes but I feel like the crowd will get behind Chelsea and Frank Lampard and Chelsea have got enough to maybe score three goals in this game and win 3-2. Anyway what do you guys think get down in the comments below and let me know your score predictions and why. I hope you have enjoyed this video guys if you have please do like the video and remember to subscribe if you're new to the channel. Uh, a little shout out follow me on social media at football Yannick on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, I do post on Instagram every now and again trying to do it daily but I don't really have any Instagram followers so that's where you can help me out. Follow me on Instagram guys. <laughs> at Football Yannick. Also, I've been doing a lot of evening streams recently uh, on my channel. Why don't you come and hang out, get in the chat, talk about football. It's great fun. And yeah, we can talk about Chelsea. So usually about 8 p.m. in the evenings, I'll be doing live streams. Anyway, guys, that's it from me. I hope you have enjoyed today's video. You guys enjoy the football and I'll see you later. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living, I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines, I rap through thought. Body bag the verse, outline the chalk. In my life seen trouble, hustle on the double. Silence on the trigger like my pick, got a muzzle. Yo, chick like to guzzle, bad boy stay in trouble. I only love this paper, sorry I don't. I love me, baby.